So please welcome Jim Al-Khalili. Excellent. Thanks very much for that. Well, good afternoon, everyone. So, a bit of, uh, a bit of hard science to entertain you for the next uh, three quarters of an hour or so. This is a talk which uh, I guess I've given over the years to uh, a range of age groups. And, and uh, coming up this morning, I sort of you know, I have a whole array of PowerPoint files where, which I look over and swap things around, try and keep things nice and fresh. Um, so the nature of time is something that has, has been debated by scientists, theologians, philosophers, great minds over the past few millennia. Um, what is time? How fast does it flow? One wag, uh, I think, once said, time goes by at the rate of one second every second. Which is a bloody stupid thing to say, of course, and you can't measure something against itself. Um, but our, our sort of common sense view of time is, is one in which, it's one that we inherited from Isaac Newton, basically. It's one in which we, have, we imagine there's this cosmic clock that ticks by the, the, the seconds, minutes, the hours, the days, the years, at the same rate for everyone. And we know our subjective view of how fast time goes by is not something we can always trust. If you enjoy this lecture, it'll go by quickly. If you're bored, it'll drag. I mean, you know, we know that. Um, but, but we sort of assume there is this time, some cosmic time that goes by at, at the same rate for everyone. We also now know that, of course, that view of time is flawed. That view of time as separate from space and our universe is not the way we see things now in, in modern physics. We, I also want to touch upon the issue, since I'm going to be talking about time, the past and the future, I want to touch on the issue of determinism. The idea that um, if, in principle, we could know the position and state of motion of all the bits, the building blocks of the universe. I mean, all the forces between all the particles, the atoms and the particles that make up the atoms. If we knew what everything was doing and where everything was in the universe at a given moment in time, then this view of time that we inherited from Newton tells us that we should, in principle, be able to compute how the future will evolve. That's what I mean by deterministic universe. It's what we call the, New the Newtonian clockwork universe. And, of course... Since we, our bodies are only, you know, our brains are made of, of atoms, particles, physical entities subject to the same laws of, of nature as anything else, then in principle, knowing the future means knowing what our actions will be in the future. So determinism tends to suggest, and this is a deep philosophical issue, though I don't want to get into too deeply, but determinism su suggests that uh, the, the future is preordained, that we have no, no free will. Well, this was compounded, I guess, in the, by the turn of the 20th century when uh, Einstein developed his, his, uh, 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 his theories of relativity. Um, in Newtonian mechanics, we have the idea that fixing the initial conditions, say, in a game of pool, will, will, will tell us how... how uh, we will know, we'll be able to compute how the future will evolve. Now, of course, we know now there's something called chaos theory, which I won't talk about, you'll be relieved to know, um, in this lecture, um, which suggests that we can never know to sort of infinite accuracy exactly where every ball is so that we can crank the handle of the equations to work out what's happening in the future. Be because it's just impossible, you know, the, the slightest change in temperature or humidity or a grain of dust somewhere would eventually magnify and alter the future. This is what's called the butterfly effect. But it doesn't rule out this notion of determinism, that in principle, were we able to know, then the future is fixed. In 1905, Einstein published a number of papers which revolutionised physics. He... Uh, proved that theoretically that atoms exist. He, he des described the nature of light as being made of particles. But most famously, he came up with his special theory of relativity. Now, for most people, non-scientists, when you say, what do you know about relativity theory? Oh, E equals mc squared. 
Uh, you know, a lot of people know what the E and the M and the C stand for. But actually, E equals MC squared is boring. It's, it was even an afterthought as far as Einstein was concerned. It didn't even appear in his first paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies in 1905. What was really profound about Einstein's special theory of relativity is that it gives us this new uh, vision, picture of space and time. Einstein said that you, there isn't this cosmic clock that goes by at the same rate for everyone. Space isn't just the stage on which things happen. Space and time are part of the fabric, the structure of the universe itself, which means we have, to some extent, some control over space and time. Or indeed, we have different perspectives, different views on distances in space and, and intervals, durations of time. Well, what does this mean? It, le it leads to this notion of what's called the block universe. Now, we know we live in three dimensions of space, right? I can move forwards, backwards, left, right, up and down. All solid objects in our universe, we know, we say they're three-dimensional, we know what that means. Um, and then there's time. We can, you can think of it, even before Einstein, we can think of time as a fourth dimension. If you want to define an event, something has happened, you have to say where it happened and when it happened if you want to know everything about it. So there are sort of four numbers. The X, Y, and Z coordinates, these are, these are the 3D coordinates that fix its position in space, then you have time. Well, Einstein said you can't separate space and time as a set of three numbers and one number. Time is almost like another axis. So you need to talk about four-dimensional space-time. Now, we can't imagine what four dimensions looks like. Our brains are only three-dimensional. And so what we do is throw away one of the dimensions of space. So imagine our space is flat. It's sort of, we're sort of cardboard cutout, you know, just a you know, flat picture on a screen. And so what I've got here is a, is a block universe. It's a 3D block meant to signify the whole universe, the whole of space. But space is just this flat surface, because I've sort of thrown away the third dimension, because then I can use it as a time axis. Okay? So, that's the whole of space, and time creeps along for us, along this axis. So you can imagine a cross-section through this universe, which is our now, our, this, this moment, and that now slice is moving along from left to right. The high now and now is the past, in front of us is the future, and a point on the now is our here and now. Okay? This is a very useful way of solving problems in physics, certainly where Einstein's theory of relativity becomes important. I'll say when, when, uh, where we might want to use that. Um, but what it suggests is, is something even more dramatic, even more bleak, in a way, than Newton's clockwork universe. Because in Newton's universe, you say, okay, the future's fixed, it's preordained, you know, what's, you know, fate, as it were, but it hasn't happened there. It's yet to unfold, even if we could, in principle, predict what would unfold. In Einstein's block universe, the future is just as real as the past. Everything is frozen, static. What sort of view is... Well, we could never have this view of the universe. This is like a picture outside of space and time. This is the view that God has. Hurrah! I, I, I say that sometimes just in case you know, people say, oh, well, that would be the view that God has. Um, so does this really mean that you know, the future is there, it's happening, you know, that our present moment is no more special than any moment in the past, any moment in the future? Well, Einstein believed that. But it's a very... So, uh, um, extreme view to have. It's not really necessary to view all the future as fixed in, in this deterministic way. It does suggest that the future is predetermined, but it's not the whole story. 